Hello again and uh, welcome to MicroAces Workshop. Uh, this is part four of the SE5A build. Um, the type two or version two of our SE5A, SE5A kit. I think in the last video I said that uh, we were going to move on to the wings um, on other sort of the, the lower wings. Um, in this episode and indeed we will but before we do that um, we are going to put some detail onto the top of the aircraft it's easier to do it now than uh, than uh, at any other stage um, what we're going to actually put on on here is the um, uh, the Browning machine gun which is one of the armaments on the SE5A. Um, it sits to the uh, the left, the port side of the aircraft and uh, it has interrupter gear, obviously not on this aircraft, but on the real SE5A um, it has an interrupter gear um, so it can fire through the prop arc. Um, so we're going to assemble that and then we've got some other bits like the, uh, the windshield um, and the uh, gun sight um, to actually uh, pop on top as as well before we start uh, going about putting the um, the lower wing on. So, without further ado, let's set about that. Let's get down onto the build board. There we go. That's better. So <laughs> I'm much smaller now, which is much preferable. Um, and uh, we can see the uh, the build board there. What we do need now, though, is uh, to start off with. Uh, Z12. So here we go. Let's remove this from its sprue. And as you can see, it's a fairly undramatic part, but um, it does require a bit of uh, shaping because um, it needs to curve over um, and uh, fit to the uh, to the side of the fuselage. And the way we do that, obviously, um, as with the previous parts, the larger parts, such as the fuselage skin, is we uh, go about scoring it. Now, in the manual, you will have a score guide that you can lay this onto. Um, as of yet, um, the, uh, the new assembly guide is, uh, is not available. So I'm going to do it freehand, but I suggest that's not the best way to do it. Um, firstly, and uh, just get the fingers out of the way so you can see that, uh, we're going to score through the front section there so that this tab here is able to fold over. And then what we're going to do is we're going to score along here um, and fan it out so that this can curve over so it basically follows the lines or the line of, of the arc of this part that we've uh, now made available. Um, but at the end here it's, it's relatively flat forming a curve against the, uh, the side of the fuselage. So let's crack on with that. So if I remember rightly, this is where they go. I do have a an old uh, or the old assembly guide open on uh, a second screen over on my on, on my laptop um, that I can have a look at. But due to advancing years. The old glasses have to be used, so I think I'm on the right tracks. So we're keeping the scores relatively tight, close to where the curve needs to be tight, and then they're fanning out um, towards the back edge of this housing. There we go. So 
so I don't know if you can see that on camera it's, uh, it's oh yeah I'm in the way now <laughs> this is not something I can get used to but you might be able to see the scores on there but as I said you'll have a template um, which you can work off anywho so let's just get those all running correctly and then as you can see a kind of a shape is a appearing there but before we do that before we actually properly fully shape and glue it to the side of the fuselage um, we'll do a little bit of um, of sanding um, to create um, some of the the bevels so that when it does sit on the fuselage you can't see much of the uh, the white edges and it all blends in a lot better um, than if we were to just stick it on straight away so just going to put those bevels on it just hold the material and sand away at the back here I'll put a more shallow bevel uh, because there'll be more of the material against the uh, the fuselage itself just gently remove that material as it gets thinner the less I want to use a back and forth motion I just use or apply pressure to the sanding in one direction um, because what I'm trying to avoid is the is catching the material and bending it the wrong way which can cause it to crack um, or crease and those creases are fairly difficult to get out. Right, let's do the bottom edge now. Okay, and now we've got some fiddly bits. Firstly, this crease that we put in here requires this part to fold 90 degrees. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it the other way and use my sanding stick just to remove a little bit of material so it makes it easier for that 90 degree position to hold once it's glued. So that's a lot better. And also where this part curves over and attaches to the bit that's folding over at 90 degrees where they come together if we can get a little 45 bevel going there then right at the edge of where they come together should be able to mask the, uh, the white of the Depron foam so it's uh, it looks a lot better now this is the this is the tough bit using this is where a little file like this suddenly seems to be absolutely enormous for the task but just taking it gently not rushing and as you can see I've got my finger behind the part just supporting it so there we go so when we bring that together now, we don't have any white edge showing through. So what I can do now, in fact, is, is glue that prior to putting it onto the fuselage. And we're going to use the Yoohoo properties of um, contact adhesive for this task. So we're going to glue I'm going to put a little glue down that joint as well where it folds. Um, and bring them together so we've got glue on both surfaces. And then just let them fall apart. And I'll let that set uh, or dry out. And then the Yoohoo will be 
uh, contact adhesive. We'll bring it together again and that should all stick nice and firmly. Right, whilst that is drying, we'll pop that to one side, clear the decks, and the next stage, uh, whilst we wait that for that to dry, is to make the uh, the barrel of the uh, the Vickers uh, 303 machine gun. Um, so, what I need for that is firstly uh, P10. Which forms the inner support for the for the barrel. Now that actually folds over on itself, and if the scoring of the uh, or the laser scoring of the part isn't uh, particularly deep, then we can actually just modify that or increase its depth just by gently running. The blade down without cutting it, cutting it in half so that's a lot easier now so we'll apply some glue to the interior of that part a bit of a splurge out And once again, I'm going to allow that to dry. And then because there's not a uh, positioning issue, because it's obviously it's attached to itself, um, then that'll, uh, that should be fine being brought together um, as a contact uh, adhesive. Right, so that's ready. And the other thing we need to do is actually create the barrel itself. And within the kit, you should have a, uh, a tube. Um, I think it's four mil, four mil diameter, um, and then we have a nice sticker S35. There we go. So let's remove the sticker. Now, this is quite a sophisticated sticker, so we just gently need to right away. In fact, I'm going to go in with my tweezers here. And use my tweezers just to support that delicate area down there as we free it. There we go. So, there we have our sticker, and all we do is apply it, sorry, let you have a look at it, just checking that the, uh, the straw is uh, nice and um, flat at the end, which it seems to be, um, and then just apply the sticker. Um, so that the main top edge of the sticker falls at the top. Of the straw. Now, let's do it from this way around because then I can actually see where it's going. There we go. So that's on there. Now before we wrap this sticker around. I'm going to pop the top of the sticker down across the top of the tube and then just very delicately tease down these little tabs to hold that cap essentially or it's the, the uh, front of the barrel in place. And then I'm very gently just wrap the sticker around the tube. There we go. So that creates our barrel of the, uh, the machine gun itself. And then what I'll do just at the base of the sticker um, is 
remove the excess tube. There we go. So the tube itself, um, the rest of it, um, can be put in the parts box and uh, used for other projects. Right, uh, the, um, within the face of the sticker, there is a little cutout. And using the tip of the blade, I'm just going to tease that open. And that will allow our, uh, a plastic part to pop through there. So let's see how our plastic part is drying. I think I put a little bit too much glue on there, but that's all right. I think that's still not, still not completely dry because of my ham-fisted approach to adding the glue. So let's, anyway, let's turn to our housing and just bring these two edges together very carefully and hopefully that you who will have set enough for that to grip and come together i'm just going to use a little bit of magic why don't i use my nail there we go Just to bring those surfaces together. And now we can just dry fit that onto the fuselage. There's a little patch. It's a very sort of light grey patch there um, that the uh, that indicates where this sits. So that all looks good. We might sand a little bit more off this bottom edge so we get a better fit on the fuselage apply some glue to this part and then I'm actually just going to leave the glue on this side I'm not going to transfer it onto the fuselage I'm just going to let that um, dry off a bit um, maybe not to the point where it's absolutely dry but uh, just allow it to dry off a little bit more. Let's bring that together. There we go, that seems to be rock solid. And then we just want to pop that into there. And let that little barrel come out the other end. There we go. That's all that. It's the excess glue that sque <laughs> squeezed out from uh, all that glue that I put into that uh, plastic part has uh, actually adhered. So uh, there's no need for me to uh, take that out and apply more glue. It's only more weight, isn't it? So the less weight, the better. So that's that done. Whilst the glue is drying on the, uh, the, uh, the, the housing, 
machine gun housing. Let's remove our windshield, E26. There we go. And on the reverse side of this, we can actually add a sticker, which is essentially a repeat of the uh, of the part. It just adds a consistency to the graphic. So S twenty one. We'll just fill that off. And then I'll use a different technique. These are all different sort of techniques that, that have seemed to work for me. Um, and just place that. Again, <laughs> so I'm going to have to get in here a little bit closer. I'm trying to keep away, keep everything in shot, but uh, sometimes you just got to. Concentrate on the job in hand. Okay. Super. So that's ready for installation. What we can do is just bend that tab there slightly so it gives it a, a slight rearward rake once it's uh, installed onto the uh, onto the fuselage. So we'll pop that to one side and have the gun sights as well, which P25. There we go. We'll just get rid of the central tab. That's not required. Once again, this is another fold over part. So we'll add a little bit of adhesive to one side. There we go. And we'll let that. I'll just fold it over to get a little more a little glue on the uh, the opposing side. There we go, and just let that dry off a little. Now let's pop this onto the fuselage. So I just literally placed it so there will be an opportunity to move if i need to i think just that's it so now we can start applying a little pressure to make sure it fits down onto the fuselage and one of the things about letting the um the glue dry a bit before applying is that it doesn't all squidge out and, uh, and then have to be cleared up in the, uh, the post-processing of the attachment of this part. So Once again, the, the knife can be the, the 
the handle of the knife can be an absolutely wonderful tool for uh, for this sort of thing just gently applying pressure if you get any glue on it like I just did there you can just wipe it off and keep going okay. So we've got a little excess glue there that's nudged out and all I'm doing is just beading it up as it dries it eventually comes free of the surface and it can just be wiped away. Just using the edge of the uh, handle there just to apply uh, probably a stronger amount of pressure because it's a smaller surface area just onto the edge of the part we've just applied and just to blend it in to the fuselage a little bit more I mean not only does it make it look a better kit but obviously anything protruding can be a source of drag and uh, for a little model like this the more you can minimize that the the better obviously with the, a lot of these scale features inherently create drag anyway but still not adding to the problem is a help I'm pretty happy with how that's going. I think that's the best I've ever done it. Really happy. Fantastic. Okay. What we can do next is actually just attach the uh, the barrel. I'm just going to quick dry fit first, just to make sure it's all going where it's supposed to there we go yeah so that's how it's going to sit on the model there's a little graphic on the uh, on the uh, the deck here that sort of shows you where it uh, where it fires along so uh, obviously we can use that as a indicator of how to position it but then it's just a matter of applying a little glue so i'm going to a little bit to the tab a little bit around the edge of the uh, tube there we go And there we have our first weapon mounted. Awesome. Okay. Windscreen on. There's a little slot just in front of the cockpit that that little tab should go into. Let me give it a little more rake and then just apply a little of the glue. Okay, 
let's just pop that in place. There we go. A little bit too much rake. <laughs> Better. No, it's still too much rake. Yeah, I'm just pulling it forward basically. Um, that's fine. We'll leave it as it is. That looks quite good. Um, and then our little sights. So we'll just fold those over, make sure they attach. I'm just going to pull them apart a bit. They seem to be slightly out of line, so let's give that another go. Now, obviously, the sights weren't flat um, on the real aircraft. It was an actual uh, telescopic tube. Well, I don't know. It wasn't <laughs> telescopic itself. It was a. I think it was slight, maybe slightly magnifying. Not not entirely sure. Um, but uh, on something like this, what we've done is we've just made it easier to uh, assemble. And also being flat once again, less drag. So there are a couple of little slots in the top of the fuselage that allow that to pop in as well. There we go. It sits on there. So what we'll do just apply a little bit of yoo-hoo and then pop it in place. <sighs> I don't know if I fancy a cup of tea, but we will crack on. So Go. that looks good happy with that so we've got some super little details now on our on our top deck the other thing with the um, uh, with the barrel here is you can actually adhere it to the fuselage as well if you uh, fancy making it uh, very permanent oh, a little oh. yeah, there gone um, In fact, I might do that myself just to make sure that it stays in position. So I'm just going to, the glue's not set yet, so just put a little blob on the underside. I'll just let that set before, uh, before putting it back. Okay, let's pop that over there. In fact, we'll Whilst that's drying, we'll clear the decks, just pop that up on the keyboard, and we can start thinking about assembling our lower wing. Now, on the new version 2 SE5A, the uh, method of wing bracing is a little different. Um, it follows more along the lines of uh, the DH-2 um, that was developed some time after the first uh, SE-5A kit and uh, and the Bristol, which actually shortly followed the uh, the SE-5A kit. But, uh, so, let's see the parts we need. Um, so, lower wing centerpiece. 
is Z11. So we'll move that from the sprue. And then we need a few of the ribs. In fact, we need uh, two sets of ribs. So let's just remove the ones we need from here now. Good. And we need a wing brace part. Now I'm going to actually remove this is the this is the new wing brace part. In fact, it's two wing brace parts, one for the upper wing and one for the lower wing. Um, if I remove both of them now, I'm going to lose one of them, <laughs> unless I put it in a safe place. But then I won't remember where that safe place is. So I'm going to actually just run down the score line that goes down the center of these two parts. Um, and then just take one away and go all the way through there. Oh, looks like both of them are coming off. Oh well, I tried. There we go. Well, one is still flimsily attached. So, we've got those that we actually need some stickers as well and a bit of carbon fiber so and the ruler for measuring the carbon fiber let's not forget that so our central central wing part here we'll just make sure we've got the tabs completely clean. Now that's got a score in it so we can get our little adverse ca our, our adverse camber that's on a road <laughs> a camber induced into the uh, into the wing um, and then we will in fact why don't we do that now we will assemble our wing brace. Now we're using the angle on this particular part um, to set how the outer wings, or the wings I should say, attach to the centre part. And uh, so, this basically glues to the underside of this wing part. And then we glue some carbon fibre strips to either side and because of the angle of this part um, it's a, essentially a triangle um, they uh, they form that uh, that brace so each uh, part of the brace should be around about 70 millimeters seven centimeters long so let's just measure that out so let's cut one there we go and then use that one to cut the next the printer next to me has just woken up and that's what that whirring machine noise is so I'm going to do here is along these two edges is actually apply a little of our yuku. There we go. Just a 
mooching it around a bit just to get the glue all over. And get them just position them so they meet in the middle. There we go. Make sure they're nice and straight along the uh, along the edge too. And then I'm just going to pop that down. Let that set. Whilst that's doing, oh, what we can do? Why don't we pop our machine gun back onto our Vickers 303 with interrupter gear? There we go. It should just stay in place nicely. Fab. That's not blowing around in the breeze anymore. So, whilst our brace is gluing, it is gluing, yes. Uh, let's prepare the ribs. So each of these parts is actually uh, two ribs. Um, but in fact, at the junction where the center part of the wing and wing attached, we have a double a double rib anyway. So what I'm going to do, rather than cut these in two, I'm actually just going to increase the score uh, to the point where they're still attached, but they will fold, fold over on one another and double up. So, let's see now, just a little bit more. You can, of course, cut them in two. But uh, there we go. So, that gives us our hold over there. So I'll just apply some glue to the inside. I shall just introduce them to each other like so and then I'll let them dry off. So, yes, we haven't scored that one yet, have we? That's not going to move. So, keep scoring. Just keep scoring. Just a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Once again, introduce them. And let them fall apart. Let's just clear the decks in the bin. And we can now attach our brace the underside of our wing along that score and keeping it central. So essentially your um, your carbon fiber comes out from where the crease or the apex of the uh, the wing shape is. So let's just get a little bit of glue on the underside of the brace triangle. Go. And just throw that on there. There we go. And what we're looking for as well is for that carbon fiber to come out perpendicular to the uh, 
the wing itself um, because obviously we have another piece of wing coming out here and we want it to be in the right position to want this this obviously continues along that fold line um, within the wing so good right let's just put that to one side and we can now bring these together Okay. Make sure they're all nice nicely stuck. And now we need to decorate those with um, some of these stickers. Which ones are they? Must be S10 and S11. So these are, it shouldn't be too difficult to get off as they're not particularly sophisticated. And then literally just wraps around. So how I'm managing this is by trying to stick it on the edge of our rib. And then all the way along to the end. A little crease there, let's just get that out. There we go. So that's stuck along the edge, and then just fold them up. Fabulous. Now, if you have, like I have here, and no doubt you will, because hopefully you have the same parts as me, um, a little excess of rib sticking out, just slice it off. Okay, and let's do the next one. S11. I'm turning it over just so I can gauge if I've got it centrally or not. This one I was a pretty much way off. So let's take it right to the edge, right to the end, and then see if we... So well, great thing about these bits is that you can just keep trying. Okay. 
so I'll just knock off that excess and there we have it so each of these positions on the edge of this central part of the wing um, with an overlap as you can see there which allows or provides a little shelf for the uh, the rest of the wing to attach to so she knows And as you'll notice at the top of the rib, there's a little uh, cutout, and that's literally uh, where the little carbon fiber strip sits. Uh, so let's apply some glue to the edge here. You can be quite generous, um, as this is uh, quite an important structural part of the build. And it's something that you can you can reinforce as well. So uh, uh -huh. cut this around the wrong way. That's supposed to be there. It's just the way that the graphic on the um, on the sticker sits. So that's all right. What I'll do, I'll um, I'll actually I will apply it here. Uh, just to transfer some glue into that area and also get some rid of some of the glue that's on that surface not a problem because obviously that surface will eventually need some glue um, but not right now so let's just glue the other side there we go And then transfer some glue into that position as well. Okay, good. I'm going to let that dry off. Just going to, because there's already glue in position um, on the centre wing for this, just going to apply a little sheen of glue onto that one and just put it to one side. Normally I would do what I did with the, uh, the other one and bring it into contact, but uh, because of my silly error. Um, so, obviously before the rib attaches, try and uh, make sure that that's got a good bend in it and it's not trying to pull the ribs you, you'll notice that the material that makes the ribs is quite flexible um, so that if this um, is pulling up all the time it will distort the ribs and uh, you won't get that, uh, that angle um, that provides a little more I believe a little more lift than it would do if it was just flat um, and also obviously um, gives a nice scale, slightly scale, nearer scale <laughs> appearance to the uh, to the wing. It's uh, I know it's uh, it's not a curve which the uh, the aircraft actually has, but um, there we go. Right, let's uh, let's start assembling these these parts. So. Make sure we've got enough hanging over. There we go. So we, as you can see, we've got a um, some of that rib, that double rib, protruding um, from the uh, from the centre wing. And let's go again on the other side. Just 
visually tracking it's all going into the into the right place that carbon fiber sitting in that uh, ridge through the ribs themselves and that, that's all sitting in here and as you can see um, you've now got these little carbon fiber pieces sticking up at a I think it's a three degree angle so there we go right now back comes our fuselage with all its lovely detail on and this is obviously going to sit under here and it should there's a there's a notch cut out um, top and bottom that should slide over let's just squish these together a bit they're a little bit a little bit too thick to go into those slots uh, so let's give that another go in you go go on And obviously that locates the whole wing so that uh, it is correctly positioned. The uh, or the aircraft itself has you know, twist or it takes that that element of surprise out. So it's just. So there we go that's how it all comes together so I think um, what we're going to do um, is actually attach that like that now it's a little bit different from the original uh, method of creating the uh, the wing um, previously what we've done is actually uh, made the whole wing and then attached that but uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to shake things up a bit and we're going to go down this route. Um, hopefully it'll also be reflected in the in the manual otherwise this would just seem strange uh, but uh, there we go. So um, I'm just uh, brains ticking over at the moment just to make sure that there's nothing going to go completely wrong with me taking this approach. Um, no I don't think so. So well, let's do that. So when this attaches to the fuselage, there are a couple of surfaces it comes into contact with, um, namely the keel and also the, uh, the, the skin. So what we're going to do is just pop some glue there. Run a light bead down the, down the skin. There. I'm all quiet again. <laughs> Concentrating. certainly a uh, quite a, uh, well it's something to get used to I wouldn't say a skill well I suppose it is a skill of being able to to talk and make at the same time to describe what you are doing when you're doing it um, so you're watching me learn as hopefully you learn and we all build better aircraft so anyway let's bring these parts into contact with one another before this glue gets too grippy Thank you. 
In fact, I'm thinking, let's just leave it there to glue. Everything seems to be in good contact. So that's good. So there we go. Okay. Well, I think that's nearly our hour up. So um, we've made a little bit of progress. We've got our detail on. Uh, we've started the process of creating the lower wing. Uh, the next step, um, let's just, the next step uh, will actually be um, quite exciting. We won't build the full wing um, to, uh, to, to start off with. I think probably the next step we're going to see is we will cover the, uh, the, the bottom of the aircraft here um, and possibly start making the undercarriage, um, which will really set the, uh, set the aircraft off um, as, it sits on the, uh, as it sits on the board. Anyway, well, thank you for your attention. Um, I hope this particular part of the uh, the build and the, the methods have been very useful um, in building the SE5A and hopefully other kits too. And uh, I'll see you in part five. Thanks very much for, uh, for watching. Mm -hmm.